desire to solve problems, to look into the future, to have vision. This is what engineering is all about. There's a great deal to be gained as an individual with an understanding of how the world works. At Berg, we divide our time roughly 50-50 between uh, partnerships with mostly large technology and media companies like Intel or the BBC and our own product design and development. We don't make formal distinctions between uh, the traditional uh, domains of engineering, software development, graphic design and communications. When you look at something like the defining products of our time, which I would argue is the mobile phone, I would probably say it's beyond any individual to completely understand all of the complexity and engineering embedded in that. It is a daunting time in some respects. The BBC has a remit to inform, educate and entertain. We were working with the BBC history and news teams and essentially we wanted to find a way of helping people to get a better understanding of very significant events from the world and get some sense of how they relate to themselves. We developed a system in which you can overlay the geographic scale of particularly potent and poignant world events on your own postcode. One of the scales that we made the comparison with was the geographic size of land affected by the floods in Pakistan. Part of an engineering understanding or part of a curiosity about the material qualities, whether those material be radio waves, algorithms, plastics, or metals, or even software, there's an understanding of them. In understanding, there is agency. Once you understand how something behaves, how it works, you can understand how to build on top of it, and indeed with it. Little Printer is a small domestic product that prints out a personalized newspaper for you on demand. The material that gets printed out at that point is as live and current, given it has a direct connection to the internet, as anything you can find on your phone. I'm comfortable designing things which are just culturally enjoyable. They're just pleasurable. If you have chemotherapy, you are given the drug throughout the body. This, unfortunately, carries horrible side effects with it because you are effectively poisoning the entire body. So one of the holy grails of drug delivery is to try and target the drug. You want it to only go to the tumour and not affect the rest of the body. We can do that within a bubble, but then of course you need A to get it to the right place and B to release it when it gets there. We are trying to engineer the coatings on microbubbles to make them more detectable. Um, bubbles make fantastic vehicles for drug delivery. We have this core of gas, we have a coating. That coating acts as a scaffold. We can put drugs into that, um, we can put DNA onto that in some cases, and we can add um, ligands targeting species to the surface of the bubble that will actually go and bind to, for example, cancer cells. Bubbles must not block blood vessels. All deep sea divers, all astronauts know this. The smallest blood vessel in the human body is about six to eight micrometers, so that's a millionth of a meter. It's about a hundredth of a human hair. Our bubbles have to be even smaller than that. They have to be about one to two micrometers, generating bubbles one by one on that scale is quite a challenge and the devices that we produce in this laboratory are aimed to do that. One of the strategies we're trying is to make the bubbles magnetic. So in addition to the drugs, whatever else we're putting in the bubble, we put magnetic nanoparticles and this allows us to steer the bubbles using a magnetic field. Because we can track bubbles under ultrasound, uh, we can monitor where they are in the body uh, non-invasively and once they reach a target site, again with ultrasound, by increasing the power we can pop the bubble open and release the drug just in that local area. So we are only treating a very, very small volume of tissue. We don't have to treat the whole body. So at the higher end of ultrasound imaging, we're turning the found much higher than you'd use in a diagnostic scan. You can actually deposit a large amount of energy into a very, very small volume of tissue. That in turn creates a temperature rise that can actually destroy tissue. You're, you're effectively cooking it. What shown here in a little gel phantom that mimics tissue, it has similar properties as far as the ultrasound is concerned. You can see this region has turned white. That means that it's uh, been denatured, it's been affected by the heat. Um, and if this were in the body, this region of tissue would have been cooked, but as you can see, the surrounding tissue is completely unaffected. So this is um, a new technique that's being pioneered for cancer treatment because it can be done with a large ultrasound transducer that is outside the body without the need for surgery. Seeing something you've produced, something that you've created, actually being utilised, I think is really, really exciting.
Manchester um, going into engineering. So much potential for it. It will take you all over the world into anything really. This is our metallics facility at the ADS for additive layer manufacturing. Behind me is an electron beam melting system. It's building parts layer by layer and growing metallic titanium parts. You've got so many benefits with the additive manufacturing technology. You've got a lot more design freedom. Weight is a huge design consideration when designing an aircraft, so you can design parts that you can't conventionally make by any other way. You know, it's much more cost effective, much better for the environment. And you've also got that huge potential then through the design stage to design for efficiency. There's a huge benefit to be had from making components lighter on aircraft. I mean, when you factor those into thousands of components, then that's, you know, you can make significant weight savings on the aircraft, which is then passed down into, you know, fuel savings. If we look at ALM as a technology and how we can use that in today's manufacturing, then we've taken a lot of design constraints away. It's really moving and pushing the boundaries and it is a, you know, it's a step change in manufacturing. It's creating new possibilities and new application potential. Well, when it comes to flying in one of these, it'll hit me then, more than likely, how much I've been involved in building it. Engineering is the result of creativity, it's the result of ingenuity, and it's the result of entrepreneurship at its best. It's a very rewarding and a very exciting form of endeavor. Very often, you take engineering for granted. You don't think how someone has engineered a product, how a product has been manufactured, what materials have gone into it. So by and large, we've come to not appreciate engineering or manufacturing in the manner we should. An engineering solution is the vision of a single person, but executed as a team coupled with a passion and a tenacity to go after that problem. Finding solutions to a problem that many people may not even see, but to be able to spot the problem and what needs to be done. This is what engineering is all about. Uh, you're standing in the virtual reality cave. It's the largest in the automotive industry. As soon as a designer has got anything to show in CAD in the 3D world, he can come down here and start understanding what it looks like. You can see the lines of the vehicle, how it would sit on the road. If you look behind me, there's a vehicle looking out onto the road. This, you can understand what the interior looks like from the driver's perspective. We can align them to the hit point of the vehicle. We have different people from different universities. We have people visiting from studios. We've even had some of the crew from Walt Disney here last week to have a look at what we've got and understand how they might influence us in the future for some of the research they're doing into animation, motion capture, uh, and even feedback technology. Sport is really important to people. Many people, it's a real quality of life issue there, their sporting life, and engineering is really at the centre of sport. I mean, throughout history, uh, sports people have always used um, the best technologies of the day. If you look back through the history of any sport, it's littered with uh, innovations, innovations which have been driven by technological developments, you know, um, material developments moving through, through the, the, the world, of, you know, starting from woods, going into carbon fibres, you know, exotic metals. These have pushed sports forward. Technology and engineering has been used as a catalyst to really allow the sports to develop um, and to, to, to go onto new ground. So what we've got here is our brand new um, football bowling machine. It's literally hot out of the, hot out of the workshop. So first day we're testing it today. And uh, this, is, this is pretty important because, well, for one thing, you know, football's a huge, huge industry. You know, the, the sports industry is worth billions and billions, I mean, about 20 billion uh, pounds in the UK alone. And globally, it's, it's a massive industry. So, so things like footballs, even though they might seem like everyday objects, have actually got real, real economic value. And every year, there's, uh, there seems to be another controversy about how how ball might not be flying correctly or what's happening with this new ball for this championship. So to understand that, we have to do some experiments. And a device like our new bowling machine allows us to do those experiments. We can fire a ball with any axis of spin, so we can get side spin, we can get top spin, we can get spin in all sorts of different axes and we can replicate all sorts of different shots. We can then track the trajectory of this shot and then that, by tracking the trajectory, we can then sort of work out the aerodynamic forces that are acting on the ball. Maybe identify if anything funny is happening or if it should be, it's behaving in, in the way it should. Here you go, Si, let's have a, let's have a go. 
this is our um, biomechanics lab, uh, our sports engineering laboratory as well. All around us, you can see these cameras, these red cameras. We put markers on my body and it will track my motion in three-dimensional space. So we use it for, for, for doing experiments in biomechanics, trying to understand how the motion of athletes works, trying to understand how we can maybe reduce injury, improve performance, see how different bits of sports equipment may change someone's motion. But it's the same technology that gets used in the world of animation and the creative industries. So if you saw the film Lord of the Rings, the character Gollum, he was actually created, animated, using a very similar sort of technology like this. So this is our brand new smart floor. This is a, um, a device, uh, an object that we've developed entirely by ourselves. We've, uh, we've built the structure, we've laid the floor, we've, we've created the electronics that sense essentially how people move. So under each of these tiles, we've got lots of uh, different load cells and they're accurately measuring the force that any user is putting through the ground. Um, in the world of sport, um, the forces that we push through the ground are very important. They effectively determine our every movement. So a, a device like this is real application for the world of health. You know, when people uh, lose their balance, they can have falls, they'll have a fall, they might break a bone, they go into hospital, they may catch a horrible you know, disease like MRSA, and it's, 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 that's a real problem. So understanding how and why people lose their balance is a really important thing for the world of health. It's hard to imagine Sony ever doing anything without engineering. It's, it's the soul of the company, the stars of the company, the engineering. In some ways, they're like the actors in the movie business. They're, they're the people who generate the creativity and generate the energy and excitement in the, in the business and create products that last for tens of years. Engineers are the continuity in the company that guarantees its survival and its success. I don't think we do a very good job of explaining to people the joy of engineering. It's a level of creativity that few other jobs can offer. It's not bloodless, it's emotional. I think we need to stimulate engineering in new and efficient and effective ways just by telling the truth more efficiently, and that's what this prize will do, I believe. Engineers are the poets of the practical world. They're the creators, the dreamers, the innovators, and they change the world in which we live. And this is so vital to the confidence of a society, to the options of a society, to the future of a society. And without it, I can't imagine how we would get up every morning and consider that our society means something. We, they create value. This prize can make people understand why it's so important. Not just because it improves society, not just because it increases value, but because it's fun. And, and if you get that message across to young people, then the world can be changed for the better. The Queen Elizabeth Prize is something that is fresh. If you've got a, a passion for trying to understand how the world works, the engineering is a fantastic career for you. This is recognition of engineers globally, um, the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in Science, but this is recognising engineers which have been far too long forgotten. It's going into the future, it is recognising and celebrating people who are going to contribute to engineering in a big way. Engineering is for humanity, and that is the bottom line. Engineers are the real revolutionaries, the ones who take society forward, who create the technologies and the structures which carry us into new worlds. They're the ones who will find the ways to overcome climate change, to answer challenges and create new industries, ones that haven't even been thought of yet. That's why we need this prize to urge people on, to encourage daring, open minds to new possibilities. So now with this new prize open to the world, let us in this generation go on to stimulate a new generation of engineering genius.